Hi there, I'm Jamie Hope. I'm with Muffle Life, and I want to talk a bit today about B12. I get asked a lot of questions about B12, mainly because we work with folks who have MTHFR, and B12 is a big question because it's one of the main cofactors in methylation, and a lot of folks have some deficiency challenges with B12. And it's really hard, I think, overall for medical professionals and practitioners to really detect and understand the level of B12 status in a patient. Mainly, this is because the blood tests that we have today are typically serum tests, which means they're testing the blood levels for the amount of B12 in your blood. Great, that sounds fine, ideally, but the issue is we care about the transport of the B12 from the blood into the cell. If it doesn't make it into the cell, it doesn't matter how much of that nutrient is swimming around in your bloodstream because it's not being used there. Where it's being used is actually in the cell. So how do we basically test the cell? Uh, well, you could have a spinal tap done, and then you'd be able to know exactly how much B12 you have. Um, in one study that I read, fibromyalgia patients, uh, a lot of them actually tested high blood level B12 serum, right? So they think, oh, I'm high, I don't need any B12. They had some spinal taps done, and in their cells, they found almost no B12 at all, which means that they were actually severely deficient with B12. So, you know, I mean, a doctor's not gonna order a spinal tap for you to determine your B12 status. What do you do, right? It's a great question. And so, and a lot of people tell me, you know, well, I have normal B12, I don't need B12. Well, you may not, but the test that you might want to take to get a little better idea about whether or not you have a B12 challenge, right, is called an MMA test or the methylmalonic acid test. If methylmalonic acid is high, even though your blood serum levels for B12 are normal, then that might indicate you have a B12 deficiency. Another thing that gets high when you potentially have a B12 deficiency is homocysteine. So if you have high homocysteine and high MMA, it's very likely that you actually have a B12 deficiency no matter what your B12 blood serum result test says. So what do you care about then at that point? It's about the form that you, oh, well, I need a shot, right? Well, a lot of times they'll actually give you a shot of something called cyanocobalamin. And so it's not about the method of how that B12 gets delivered to you, it's about the form of B12 you take. Cyanocobalamin requires four different conversions in the body. Most people can't make those conversions. There are a lot of mutations out there that most folks have that make it hard for that conversion to happen. So cyano is a fairly unhealthful form of B12 for most people. And in fact, some folks convert so little of it that it actually makes them sick to get a shot. I happen to be one of those folks. Um, a study was done and it shows that just as helpful as a B12 shot is sublingual form of B12, and specifically if you're getting the right forms. So the active forms are hydroxocobalamin, adenosylcobalamin, and methylcobalamin. So those are the forms you want to be looking at, and you want to take it sublingual. If someone's giving you a pill or a capsule and they're asking you to swallow it, you are not getting that B12 in your system, but maybe 4% of what you take. 4%. That's a waste of your money. Make sure it is a sublingual, whether that's liquid or whether it's a tablet. We've got a couple of different great products to check out, uh, sublingual B12s. Uh, one with all three forms, one with just hydroxocobalamin. I hope that helps. Take care.